I was a senior in high school. I had a girlfriend at the time who was going through some trouble and living with some friends in a technical college neighborhood of duplexes. The entire campus was a hotbed for various crimes at night. The campus was bordered on both sides by a town with, well, above average drug activity. It was poorly lit, and drug deals, theft, and assault would happen pretty regularly on the same street as my girlfriend's duplex. The campus police were always responding to multiple crimes across the sprawling campus. Rarely did I ever drive on the grounds without seeing a police car flying down the street at full code. I had avoided actually seeing anything on campus up until this particular night. I was visiting with my girlfriend. I was a scrawny, unintimidating 18-year-old. Her friends were out of the house doing something else so we were enjoying the privacy. After some time, I realized that I had left something in my truck that I wanted to go get. I left the house, already on guard knowing full well what kinds of things happen in the area. The only light on the whole block was on the very end of the street. The orange glow of the high pressure sodium light barely reached the yard of the house. I walked over to my truck, which was parked on the street. As I got closer, I realized there was a man standing in the yard of the house right across the road. I could barely see him, but the silhouette suggested that it was a tall, slender man. He was wearing black jeans and a black hoodie, which immediately put me on guard. This is a college campus though. This guy might just be out enjoying a cigarette. He was standing directly underneath a tree in the middle of the yard of the house. So that was my rational answer for his being there. Well as I noticed he began whistling a tune, indistinguishable. I assumed it's a tune of his own creation. It was slow and random. I felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, but decided to continue to my truck. I put my key in the door the passenger side furthest from the whistling man. I leaned over to grab the stuff from my truck. I looked up and noticed that he is now walking from the yard, crossing the street and walking directly toward my truck. I stood up, shut the door and immediately made a beeline for the house. I sprinted with all of my might and I heard a second set of footfalls behind me. With the footfalls came a whistle, frantic to match the pace of the run. I got to the door opened it and turned as I slammed it shut. In my turn, I caught a glance at the whistler, a white man wearing a hoodie and a scarf or a gaiter covering the bottom half of his face. I locked the door and ran to my girlfriend's room. I told her what happened. At first, she didn't believe me. She knows I love to tell horror stories and tend to double down around Halloween. It was October. But then, she heard it. The man was circling the house, whistling. We quickly covered the windows in her bedroom with blankets. They're the awning style, the type that don't lock properly and can be pried open from the outside with ease. The man is still circling. We sat there, petrified, for what seemed like 10 minutes. Finally, we got enough sense to call the police. They responded as fast as they could, but coming all the way across campus doesn't yield well to quick response times. They scared the guy away before they were anywhere nearby with their sirens. They searched for about 20 minutes, took a statement from each of us, and then left. After that, my girlfriend experienced many more similar situations. None of them whistlers, though. I think it was the same guy, however. He picked us when he saw how freaked out we were and played the game for months afterwards. Never when I was there, though. So, creepy whistling man? Let's not meet. So this was something that happened my freshman year of college. Being new to a campus that I didn't have many friends on, I began seeking out some cool people to hang out with as I had long breaks between classes. I quickly found myself spending time with a large group of girls from my math class. We began spending time in the large area of my campus and made some friends through there too. To give an idea, it was a relatively small campus with only a few buildings and the lounge area was quite a small room with some pool tables and seats. As the semester went on, we began making it a regular ordeal to all go to lunch or coffee at least once a week. Our lunch group quickly went from five people to nearly 20. Friends started bringing acquaintances and our group grew. One kid named Spencer, who was a friend's friend, joined us regularly for coffee or lunch. One day word got back to me that he was into me and wanted to get my number. 
I nicely told my friend that I wasn't interested and that I had a boyfriend, which was a lie. I thought this would deter him as he came off as a non-confrontational person. One morning, a group message was sent out by my friend Trish, who asked if we all wanted to meet up for coffee, and everyone for the most part agreed to meet. I arrive about 10 minutes early to almost everything, so I was used to being the first one there. Spencer arrived shortly after me. He sat down next to me and I exchanged a friendly good morning and a smile. Slowly the time passed and no one else showed up. We sat awkwardly for about 15 minutes and finally he spoke up and said, this is a surprise date, I planned it. I think it's important to mention I'm pretty hot headed and I don't like being lied to. I got up from the chair and gathered my things and left without a word. The next couple of weeks went by without a word from Spencer. I thought that maybe he had gotten the hint that I wasn't interested. Soon though, he started showing up at the same time that I worked out at the school gym. I didn't think much of it, because our schedules were pretty similar, so like myself, I just assumed that this was the only time he had to work out. Soon it went from being there at the same time to him following me around the gym. Whatever machine I was using, he was conveniently at the one right next to me lifting light weight and staring. I had some friends that worked the front desk of the gym so I mentioned it to them, and they said they'd take care of it if it got out of hand. One day I was squatting at the gym, and mid-rep, he walked up, pulled my headphone out, and proceeded to tell me my form was off and grabbed my waist. I racked my bar and turned around angrily telling him don't fucking touch me. He apologized and proceeds to ask me out once again. I told him I wasn't interested and had a boyfriend anyways which I didn't. Once again, a couple weeks went by, and the only contact I had with Spencer was sitting at the opposite end of the table during our lunch gatherings. I thought he had finally gotten the hint. Then one day, at the gym, I was walking down the hallway to the girls' locker room when he walked up behind me and put both hands on either side of the hallway behind my head. He said, I know you feel the connection I do. Why don't you let me take you out? I quickly yelled for my friend Chris who worked the gym's front desk. Keep in mind, Chris is very large, 6 foot 3 and extremely fit, whereas Spencer is 5'7 and well, wasn't fit at all. Chris quickly walked around the corner to see what was happening and came running down the hallway yelling at Spencer. He was then banned from the gym and not allowed back in. One night, I get a text message from a random number stating that it's Spencer and he wanted to apologize for what happened at the gym. I told him what he did wasn't okay and that I wasn't interested in him and I'd like for him to leave me alone from now on. He apologized again and again I didn't hear anything else. Thinking that was the last time I blocked his number. All was well until one day when I came home from work to a bouquet of white lilies sitting on my doorstep. Thinking they were from my grandma. She does sweet stuff like this. I got excited, picked them up, and took them inside. Then I read the letter. It was unsigned and just said, I love watching you. I frantically started calling and texting friends thinking this was a sick joke as they knew about how creepy Spencer had been. I got concerned answers and honest no's from every single one. I panicked, threw the flowers out, and made sure to lock my door. Later that night, I get a text from a random number that said, You didn't enjoy the flowers? I saw you throw them away. At this point, I had had enough. I called the number and the familiar voice of Spencer was on the other line. I lost my shit, quite literally. I didn't even let him get past his sickening hello before I started screaming at him. He then calmly stated if I wanted to talk to him to come outside. I looked out my window and there he was, standing right in front of my house, smiling. I called the cops and when they showed up they detained him and I got a restraining order placed on him. The cops then contacted me a couple days later to let me know he has more than one restraining order placed for the same behavior, 10 including mine to be exact. I had late classes the semester after this and called campus police to walk me to my car every night after because I was terrified he would show up again. Shortly after that I moved about 300 miles away and luckily have never seen him again other than his every so often random Instagram follow request. So Spencer, let's not ever meet again.
In the fall of 2010, I decided to go back to college. I was a single mom of three boys, but they were all in school now, and me going back was finally possible. The school I went to is a regional campus to a very large university, and located in a neighborhood that is known for crime, meth, heroin, prostitution, etc. But it was only a 20 minute drive from my home, and I didn't feel unsafe about going there. The first day and first class were intimidating. I didn't know anyone and was a lot older than most students. I was 28 at the time. I sat down in the back of the room at a table, and a few minutes later, a lady, who was around my age, sat down next to me. She was very skinny, smelled like cigarettes, greasy hair, sunken eyes. But she started to talk to me and seemed normal enough. She started off the conversation telling me that she chose to sit next to me because I was wearing the prettiest blouse in the room. Strange, but as an awkward person, I leave a lot of leeway for people to say or do awkward things before I think too deep into things. She didn't have a backpack, any books, a pen, notebook, nothing. She said her financial aid hadn't come through yet, but she didn't want to fall behind on classes and asked if she could share my book. I agreed and gave her a pen and paper also. After the first class, she asked if I would mind going to the library with her so she can scan some of the pages to take home. I agreed and we started to head to the library. She stops and looks at her phone and says her son just texted and needs her to come home to do something. She asks if I'll come with her. I tell her I have another class shortly and can't go with her. I ask if she still wants to go to the library first. She says no, that she has to get to her son but really can't go alone. I kept telling her I cannot go with her and she starts crying. At this point, we were in a common area outside and the parking lot was to one side and the library the other. I tell her I need to go to the library and she's welcome to come, talk, whatever she needs, but I have to go. I didn't like being outside away from people with this woman anymore and was trying to get back to a busier area. She gets really upset starts screaming, basically says fuck you to me. She may have actually said fuck you, I can't remember how the interaction went exactly because I was frozen in confusion by how quickly she transitioned from friendly, then to crying and scared, and to now screaming in my face a slew of hateful, angry things. I turned around to start walking to the library and called my friend so that I would have someone aware if this lady tried anything more than just screaming. I get to the library vestibule and watch her through the glass doors. She is standing at the parking lot. Then a car pulls up with a man in it and is obviously upset with the woman. They're arguing, but I can't hear them from inside the vestibule. Eventually she gets in the car and leaves with him. The next day I was dreading class because I didn't know what this woman's attitude would be that day. But she wasn't there the next day. In the end, she never came back to class. I didn't know her name or at the time how to look at a class roster, but looking back, I'm fairly certain she was not enrolled at the school at all, and for whatever reason she was trying to get me to leave with her. I wish I knew her intentions, but at the same time, I'm glad I never had to find out. This was a strange encounter. It was very scary at the time, but when I tell people this story, they usually don't think it's something to freak out about. Last Thanksgiving, I was driving home from college with my friend, both 21-year-old females at the time. I live in a very isolated part of Arkansas that requires driving through an hour of hairpin turns in the mountains. There are a lot of blind turns and the whole time you're driving on the edge of a huge drop-off with no barriers. I'm usually pretty confident driving through the mountains, but we were in my friend's car, so I was going slower than usual driving about five over the speed limit. Almost as soon as we started the roughest part of the drive, another car was tailgating us pretty close. This was stressing me out, and as soon as I saw somewhere I could pull over, I did. I pulled into a church parking lot, and my friend offered to drive the rest of the way, but I declined as it was completely dark, and she had never driven this route before. We get back on our way, and a few minutes later I have to come to a screeching halt as there's a car stopped in the middle of the road. It wasn't on the shoulder at all, just stopped dead in the middle of the road. My friend is saying that they must have broken down, but can't call a tow because there's no service in this area. 
I immediately have a bad feeling and lock the doors. I tell my friend to stay in the car no matter what. She is starting to get scared at this point and points out that she thinks it was the car that was following us. I can't tell, but I'm very scared at this point as well. It's parked right before a hairpin turn, so I can't pass it. My friend starts frantically telling me to go ahead and pass it, but I don't want to get hit by a Mack truck or fall off the mountain. I honk my horn. Nothing happens. No chance of calling for help as there is no cell service. We wait there for a while while doing nothing. My friend is crying and freaking out, but I'm so scared to try to pass them. I honk a couple of times and eventually a guy gets out of the car, comes around back and leans against his car just staring at us. My friend is freaking out even more, and I'm just frozen. I tell her not to make eye contact. I'm ready to floor it if he does something, but he just stands there staring. He's not checking his car or anything. I try to stay calm and pray that another car will come along soon. This goes on for what seems like forever, but was probably 15 minutes. He's just casually leaning against his car looking at us. Eventually we see car lights in our rear view, and then the guy jogs to his door and gets back in his car. He speeds off, going dangerously fast, so there was nothing wrong with his car. I start driving not wanting to cause a wreck. We don't see anything else for a while, but we pass the same car parked along the highway a while later and it pulls back on and starts tailing us again. I try to speed up and get rid of him, but he keeps following. We have cell service at this point, but I don't know if we should call the cops because nothing really happened. I call home and tell my brothers what was going on and tell them to wait on the porch for us. The car follows me all the way home down the really long drive to my house. I get to my house and my two brothers are waiting on the porch holding their deer rifles. I pull in and the car just goes to the end of the drive, loops around and speeds off back the way it came. We tried to see its license plates, but we couldn't make them out. Me and my friend were really freaked out, but when I told other friends the whole story, they didn't think it was a big deal. Maybe not the creepiest thing to ever happen to me but it definitely made me deactivate my account and look behind my shoulder. I was 19 years old at the time this happened, single, attending college at a university in my hometown. I still lived at home. I had friends, but I was romantically lonely, so I decided to download OkCupid and give it a whirl. I had friends who had used the app with moderate success. I considered myself streetwise, and I knew I could always deactivate it if anything creepy happened. I didn't choose a username that could directly lead to finding me on social media, and I didn't link up a Tinder account. I didn't list anything overtly personal in my profile, just interests like music and movies. The usual, I like hiking, let's get to know each other, blah blah blah. Things went mostly fine. I got pervy messages, nothing too extreme. I conversed pleasantly with some men and went on dates. I felt safe. Then one day I logged into my Facebook and had a chat request. He told me his name was Ryan, and he was college-aged, attending school at my university looking for friends. Now keep in mind I had also been in a group on Facebook about finding friends on campus because I often felt alienated there. I thought this man was from the group, so my messages were very friendly and trying to get to know you type of chats. The conversation was fine at first, but I thought it was odd that he didn't have a profile picture. He kept begging me for more pictures of myself, but demurring when I asked for a picture of him. He would bemoan how ugly he was and how pretty girls never liked hideous guys. I tried to be nice, but it started bothering me. Then the messages started getting bizarre. He kept asking me where I was going to be in class or go to class the next day. I didn't respond. They started getting more and more frequent and hysterical. I'm talking 20 or 30 a day, begging me to respond. Then finally, in terrible punctuation, I see you every day sitting in the Mac lab in the library. You are so cute, please talk to me. My blood ran cold. He had sent an accompanying picture of himself. I recognized him as the man who had harassed me on OkCupid and who I had eventually blocked. He was probably at least 20 years older than me balding with extremely, extremely yellow teeth. 
I'm not trying to judge someone on appearance, but something in his eyes was wild and just didn't sit right. I'm not sure if I'm describing this right, but his eyes were just little black pits. He really creeped me out. Somehow he had found my personal Facebook from OkCupid and I'm not even sure how. But he also knew I had studied at X Library in the Mac Lab and made it clear he had been watching me for quite some time. There is no way he would have known that unless he had been actively physically stalking me. I had never seen him on campus and never saw him again. I blocked him instantly from Facebook and always checked behind my back when I walked at night on campus. For a while I worried he was still stalking me at the library, so I changed the locations I'd study at. It was all very nerve wracking. Creepy stalker, okay Cupid dude? Let's not meet. This takes place two or three years ago when I was in uni. I lived on an island and our university was in a very small village slash town in the mountains, where literally nothing ever happened. The crime rate on the island is pretty low. My friend and I used to overthink a whole lot so when we stumbled upon something out of the ordinary, we would immediately freak out. It was in the middle of winter, our classes ended around 6 so it was already dark outside. I told my friends to come to my place to have dinner and watch American Horror Story Season 7. My flat was on the second floor and had a window that directly faced the property's parking lot. I could basically see if anyone was entering or leaving the property. We saw a car pull up in a parking spot and it never turned its headlights off for the rest of the evening. We were having fun and didn't think too much of it, thinking someone might have forgotten to turn off their headlights. Eh, bummer. My friends started to leave one by one except for one of them who stayed a little later. It was around 1am and the car was still there with its headlights on. It had been there since 6pm. We had a weird feeling about this somehow. My friend left and I closed my blind so I didn't have eyes on the car anymore and immediately got ready for bed. I knew she had to pass by the car to leave the property so eventually checked it out. She called me a few minutes after she had left, freaking out telling me there was a girl in the car not moving at all with her eyes wide open sitting in the front seat. I told her to come back to my place to figure it out. She passed by the car twice so I'm pretty convinced that what she saw was real even though she had a pretty large imagination but I wanted to check it out as well. She was really freaking out and told me that she wasn't going out there again so I turned my phone's flashlight on and went to check out the car alone. My friend opened the blinds to check on me and called me so we were on the phone the whole time. The parking lot was right next to a construction site where they were building a new research unit for the campus and there was a huge open garage where I imagine trucks parked for deliveries. It was empty at night. I went to check the car out to see if that girl was okay and as soon as I approached it, the car got the heck out of the parking spot maneuvered next to me and started to pull back into the pitch black garage. Then it turned its headlights off. I didn't see the girl at all because the headlights were blinding me. But now I knew she wasn't dead or anything. I hesitated going into that garage. I really wanted to know what was going on but my friend on the phone told me to get the fuck back into the flat. It was a crazy thought but geez what the hell just happened? I hurried back to my flat and my friend and I tried to figure out what had just happened. We thought about calling the police, but we figured it wasn't good enough of a reason. I'm pretty sure the girl was stalking someone. I really don't have any other explanation. But the point of stalking someone is to be discreet, right? Why the hell would she have left her headlights on the whole time she was there? Which was about 7 hours from when I noticed the car until she backed into the garage from 6pm to 2am. My friend was too scared to go past it again so I offered that she sleep over and I peeked out the blinds from time to time during the night and eventually saw the car back up into the same parking spot again. It kept us awake for a little while, thinking we had seen a ghost and making up other theories about what we saw but we eventually fell asleep. The car was gone in the morning. To this day I honestly have no idea what the hell was going on or what my friend saw. But creepy girl in the car? Let's not meet again.